Welcome to Kamikaze Video Drum. That's Miracle Max. And that's Kamikaze Mike, and we're here to talk to you about the comics you could be reading. New, old, graphic novels. By Crom, let's get started. It's a lot of dead air right now. Oh, well, speaking <laughs> of dead... Uh, nice. <laughs> I can just do anything. Damian uh, Wayne. Damian Wayne, he's back. I like Damian Wayne. I don't see the need to bring the character back to life, though. I thought his death... For Max, dead is dead. No, not true at all, actually, Mike. <laughs> but when a character's death like makes a huge impact, give it some more time. The character died last year, and they did made such a... Was it last year or two years ago? I don't remember. But they made like such a big deal of it. it they tied it in to every single Batman book. And mm -hmm. it was cool. There was like... People liked it. It was like the first New 52 book. To, I actually heard you being like, oh, I like this issue of Batman. It was actually felt like an issue of Batman and not an issue of, you know, Wildcats not or whatever. Not just Penza doesn't like the new, new 52. I know, but this is... And I and New 52 is like really grown on me. To me, it's all the same anyway. But um, this is... It's the same thing they do every single time with a Grant Morrison book. And and I don't want to turn people off from reading it because it's it's actually it's as far as writing goes it's Peter Tomasi who's totally fine he's totally a cool writer I've he's got a great writer yeah I got a lot of books of his in my collection and um, was it Patrick Gleason yes who's cool he's a really good artist love him but I just don't see the need. I'd much rather have a new Robin than bringing Damian Wayne back already because Damian Wayne was a cool character but his story was supposed it was it was his death was written by the person who created him, or at least brought him back, mm -hmm. I should say, as like a big character. So with that in mind, I feel like they should honor it. Because it was clearly supposed to be this whole character arc. And, I, and granted, comic books are like a really fluid thing, but it's just, it's totally just giving, it's totally just caving to, to, to people who are just, I feel like, a little bit behind on it, I guess. Which is okay, but it's just push your old stuff, though. Like, you still have so much more, I mean, you still have a lot of these other stories to, te uh, to, to, to tell other people, actually collect them in a, like, like a saga of Damian Wayne sort of thing before mm -hmm. just bringing him back to, to, it's well, just so predictable. He's, he's back and, uh, I mean, he's significantly changed now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he really is. I mean, cause. Rich, it, it's a fine line i think i mean i don't think i'm spoiling it for anyone um damien's back they told uh, in you in the what was robin rises uh series they tell you what's gonna he, happen in this title right there robin he, rises yeah but he has superpowers i know yes robin has superpowers now and um which is actually the kind of, potential for this is kind of interesting yeah in that you know batman has always been at the forefront of the of the duo um, but now, uh, Damien's always kind of like just run ahead and done his own thing. Yeah. Um, but now that he has superpowers, he can actually kind of run right over Batman physically as well as like rebelliously as a, as a as a son. And um, how is Batman going to handle this? I agree. You know, it's... interesting, but kind of hokey. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And and like I said, I really love this run of. Batman and Robin and Grant Morrison's story. That one there, yeah. But it's hard to get in, in like a whole trade. I want to recommend it to customers to read because it's my favorite Batman stuff. But it's, it's, there's no, the saga of Damian Wayne is not easily collected. What I like about this is that that's Dick Grayson and not Bruce Wayne. Yes. Like, I liked that dynamic actually more than Batman and Son. I just reread this stuff. It's really, really good. It's some of my favorite Batman stuff they've done forever. And, like, I wish I wish Dick Grayson was still Batman. I like Grayson. I like him as the secret agent. It's really cool. And not only that, I think they're doing it this, this story a disservice by not pushing this stuff. Because, honestly, Robin... He, okay, so he, he comes back to life. He gets his powers from who... We talked about Dark, uh, dark Side and Apocalypse. The fourth World. The Fourth World, <laughs> which is ridiculous, but... But in Final Crisis, when Batman dies and has to like claw his way back from like the bottom of time, mm -hmm. there's a lot of fourth world stuff in there. Dark side, dark side is I, I, it's hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. 
but it would make sense. I really recommend you read this. Uh, uh, the Return of Bruce Wayne has all this sort of like really ties Apocalypse into Batman's mythology somehow. Did you read it? No. It's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool and weird. So before you read this, try and read this. If you don't want to read this, read this anyway. And check it out at Kamikaze, where you can also subscribe to all sorts of cool comics. Damien forever. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tresha. And I'm Renee. And at Kamikaze, supporting your local comic shop means discounts for you. Did you know that by subscribing to just one title, you are granted a 10% discount on all new comics and graphic novels? We only ask that you stop by once a month to pick up your discounted titles. We also offer excellent mail order subscriptions that are delivered right to your front door with free shipping included. So support your local comic shop in a meaningful way. Become a Kamikaze subscriber today. Welcome back to the 100 greatest graphic novels of all time in no particular order. We're rolling through it. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep those books so rolling. Uh, with our all ages book, we have Courtney Crumrun, which is really fun because it's sort of like a, it's it's about a sort of gothy girl and her fantastic It's okay to be world. gothy. It is okay to be gothy. That's sort of the, the thesis statement on this book. <laughs> you know, it's not just Joan and Vasquez comics or whatever. No, no. They, we have all sorts of fun stuff for that sort of inclination of person. And this is... <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's totally like a subsect of people. And they get a lot of flack for being a little dour or grim or whatever. This is a fun kids comic that tells you it's okay for that sort of stuff. And they've been it's been around for a good while now. Yeah. But I like these repackaged books. They're, it's, uh, it's awesome they're for beautiful. a kid. It's just, you know, when you're a kid... You want to carry around your comics everywhere. You want to read your comics. You want them to look I cool. used to just fold them up and put them in my back pocket. Like, yeah, no wonder no, they're not I worth didn't. anything these I did days. not. First appearance of Wolverine in the back. Like, this is fun. It's a really awesome hardcover. Feels good in your hands. It's textile. Yeah. As I heard G uh, Jill at the shop say. Yeah, good, good comics for young ladies. Uh, what do we got over there? Um, we've got the arguably the best Daredevil stories ever. Frank Miller's Daredevil. It's the first... Besides, you know, Batman... Uh, no, actually, this came out before Batman Year Indeed, One. Didn't it? This is the first gritty reboot, I would say, where they took a character who was so used to being a Spider-Man knockoff, uh, Daredevil, and they gave him his own mythos. They went back... They backtracked into the retcon and made him a ninja. The book was on the verge of cancellation. It was being shipped bi-monthly, which is usually... Back in the day was the, uh, the precursor to getting canceled. You just, like... <laughs> <laughs> like just kind of have your uh, yeah. your publishing schedule, and then uh, Frank Miller, brand new artist, came on for uh, for one issue, reinvigorated, um, and like a year later, boom, the book is monthly and it's a bestseller right in the early '80s. And this this version of Daredevil is still like one of the the best Daredevil. Just stories talking about it makes me want to go back and reread it. It does. It yeah. introduces... Go in your hot tub time machine and just sit back and just read some Daredevil. <laughs> it introduces Elektra, uh, the Kingpin. It doesn't introduce Kingpin, but it no. brings him... As Makes him kind of... Daredevil's arch nemesis. Yeah. Which is cool. He's the ultimate mob boss. Uh, the Hand make their first appearances. Um, precursors to the Foot Clan. And uh, really makes Bullseye the evil... Yeah. mf -er that he's supposed to be. And speaking uh, of evil bastards. Yes. Uh, the Boys, which is Garth Ennis's, not love letter, more like his hate mail to superheroes. <laughs> uh, he's really fun. It's about it's set in like the, the goofiest, most stereotypical superhero universe. Mm -hmm. Like You just hate these superheroes. They're such bastards. Are they like DC heroes? They're everything. Okay. There's the DC heroes. The, the X-Men are terrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do I hate the when the X-Men show up in this book? But they're a government... Uh, they're essentially kind of like Blackwater. Okay. And they they set them up against all these superheroes who get a little too big for their britches. Okay. And it's all about the new recruit um, to this. And it's just... It's as grim as it gets. It's, it's probably the grimmest. Because Garth Ennis, he writes grim stuff, which is fine. But usually there's a veneer of, like, sentimentality... Or, um, he, like, he writes a really good Superman. Like, when his Superman shows mm -hmm. up in some of the other books, Hitman's the one I'm thinking of, 
he he's a great he's he's a great writer. He can get into any character, but with that in mind, he can also just trash any character, and that's what he does with the boys. So if you uh, all of a sudden hate your superhero collection, check out the boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's fun. It's cathartic. Um, you may or may not hate um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, our DC Comics selection. Um, written by Alan Moore. Alan Moore. Eh. 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 Um, it's great. It's, eh. yeah. it's uh, you know, it's Victorian era characters. You know, Mina Harker, Harkness, um, Captain Alan ne- Quartermain. Captain Nemo, Mr. Hyde, the Invisible Man. All these awesome They're public... They're the Justice dom- League. They're, yeah, it's a public... Of their time. It's the public domain Justice League. <laughs> um, they team up and they fight. Um, who do they fight? They fight. Eh. They fight M Moriarty, right eh. from uh, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, and they move on and they just work their way through fiction. And the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen actually tells the entire story, like the entirety of modern human fiction, as sort of this one cohesive superhero universe. And it goes throughout the different mm-hmm. eras, and it all it all builds on itself. So new characters show up. Um, eventually, sort of James Bond shows up. Yeah, uh, and yeah, just I mean, there have been Sal. leagues in the past. <laughs> yeah. There are leagues in the future. Um, what is it? Uh, Sal um, from On the Road shows up. Yeah. <laughs> There's all sorts of cool stuff. Um, well, it's it's not that cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's Alan Moore. It's not so much cool as it is like really, really well written and good. Yeah. Um, and Kevin O'Neill uh, is the artist for almost all of it. I yes, think he, he is, is actually he, the artist. No other for artist does it. And it's really great if no you, other artist can. If you like, if you really like prose, if you like, um, you know, real books. Uh, this is a really fun <laughs> <laughs> comic book <laughs> for you to read. And we have the omnibus edition. And the other editions. Do you like that? Omnibus fancy. Uh, check them out, guys. These are 100 greatest graphic novels. So Videodrome is filmed at Kamikaze in Somerville, Massachusetts, and we got awesome stuff. We got new toys, old toys, new comics, old comics, subscriptions, an awesome eBay store. Check us out. We are the best comic book store on the East Coast, bar none. (laughs) 